the computer um, has been an absolute godsend to me. I haven't, I, I don't know where I'd be actually without a computer today. The computer is a great tool for communication, learning, fun, shopping, running one's own environment. And for me especially, it's given me the opportunity to get work and to work in um, a field that I love. The computer has changed my life and, and the way that I work. I wouldn't be able to do the work that I do without the computer. If you um, have access to a computer, and, um, you're able to communicate with the, with the outside world, and they won't even know you even have a disability unless you tell them. It helps me keep in contact with other people. Um, you know, homework is the main thing, but email, I play computer games. Well, when I was younger and I was in high school, I always, I, I gravitated towards design in artistic areas. And when I was injured, I thought that area of my life was pretty much over. Computers began to get smarter and more graphical. I started really becoming design or oriented and being able to get back into the computer and I haven't slowed down since. I just love the computer. I can draw, I can design things, I do architecture with it, I go on the internet. Well, I do a lot of paper writing, a lot of work on the computer. I spend hours and hours every day doing either reading or writing or, or both. Um, having the internet is great because it allows me to do so much. You know, you just click on all these different websites and one thing leads to another. It's just made me feel a as independent as I can possibly be. The, the computer is one of the most powerful new tools and one of the most liberating tools for people who have disabilities um, that we've ever seen. I've seen severely disabled people who without this technology wouldn't be working are now working. They're working as researchers, they're working as software de developers, they're working as writers, they're working as editors. The computer, by its very nature, um, is very flexible. It can take information and present it auditorily or visually. It can take input from a keyboard or a mouse or voice from many different types of input. There are a lot of ways to use a computer, even for those of us who don't have good hand function. In this video, we're going to look at some of these options, from the simplest to the most complex. First, let's look at the most basic, the mouse stick. It's my favorite but it doesn't work for everyone. Well, fortunately for me, I have a good amount of neck movement and range of motion with my head, so I can, I can use my mouse stick and hit almost every button on the keyboard. And I've developed little ways uh, to make the mouse work for me. Um, I put Velcro on the mouse so that it's easier for my mouse stick to grab a hold of and drag and drop things. My mouse sticks, which I make myself I can type fairly quickly with it, not not super fast, it's not like, it's probably a couple words a minute, I don't know exactly what it is. Yeah, I do have preferences on, on pens actually, and ones that are um, not too hard, you know, so that my teeth don't hurt too much. For some people with very little head movement, Morse code and a sip and puff system is a better option. I tried Morse code 15 years ago, and it wasn't for me. Much more common these days is voice activation. It's simple, inexpensive, but I didn't find it very useful. It was a little too sensitive, and I needed a perfectly quiet room to make it work, but for others, it works great. Um, I got to try out all the different um, adaptive interfaces. Um, Morse code seemed to work the best because the um, speech recognition wasn't very good back in, you know, 89. And that's how I was typing to begin with. Each and every letter by a series of sips and puffs for dots and dashes in Morse code. And it took forever. I use a voice activated software program called Dragon Naturally Speaking, which works very well for me. How much 2005? New paragraph. Chris had a voice activated computer. It changed his life. Um, from the time that he first started using it right out of rehab, it was still very rudimentary. 
and it made a lot of mistakes and he would say something like he would be dictating and say I want to wish you a happy birthday and it would say like I want to go fishing and dirty day or something you know it just really it would get really mixed up but it got so much better within the you know five years later ten years later it was incredible I speak just like I'm speaking with you right now that the words come out I can write a 15 page paper at 11.30 at night in seven or eight hours like everybody else in college. And through everything being voice activated with the Dragon Dictate system, uh, I can do the TV, the VCR, I can open the doors. We have a dog, so when I am home alone, I can open the back door and let the dog in and out. The key to operating a computer is operating a switch, whether it's with your tongue, with the sip and puff system, head control, elbow, chin, it's all about a switch. As long as someone has at least one controllable movement anywhere within their body, we're able to tap into that control and use that to access uh, computers, wheelchairs, and any other type of technology. And to, to move the mouse, which I, I use pretty extensively also, it works through the wheelchair system that I have. The mouse is infrared and uh, it sends a signal from my wheelchair to, to the mouse and I have a little remote control that sits on the, the roof of my mouth and I hit different buttons with my tongue. In recent years, Quadza began to use something called a head mouse. This is operated with a device connected to the forehead, either with a hat, a headband, a sensor directly on the forehead, which operates an on-screen keyboard. Right now I have a uh, wireless um, head mouse. I make the sip and puff switch for it, and I use a screen typer to type with. WIPIC is what we call an on-screen keyboard, an alternate access uh, keyboard solution for people who can't physically use a standard keyboard. And what it does is present uh, a visualization of a keyboard on the computer screen. The head mouse has a, a connector for plugging in a special adaptive switches which are made by a number of com companies around the world. If you can't use any pointing device at all, we can use uh, one or several switches, in which case they interface with the computer and then the WIPIC on-screen keyboard highlights uh, rows or columns of keys in sequence and you choose one by pressing a switch. If a person cannot use one of those switches, then we have a utility built into our on-screen keyboard called Dragger that allows you to do button clicks just by moving the pointer and then holding still for a programmable set time. And then after that time expires, it will click the left mouse button for you. Here's something cool in Gee Whiz. Brain control. Control your computer with your brain. It's still in development, but it has great potential in the future for people without any movement. The Cyberlink Brain Fingers is a device that consists of a headband with three sensors that pick up voltage at the forehead and then sends it to a computer. So we have people that are using an on-screen keyboard with the Cyberlink triggering and they're able to type, search the net and communicate with their loved ones. But now we're getting to the point where we actually can couple directly in to the neural system so that we can bypass some of the motor systems that may be uh, causing problems and allow people to have more direct control. Uh, research is now being conducted to actually look at putting electrodes on the inside of the skull so that it's much faster and finer control. I think in terms of a dramatic change, I've seen um, individuals and I, I've seen them grow up from when they're three or four years old and now they're at university and without computer technology they would not be at university. They would be languishing, not talking, not communicating, not writing. People with physical disabilities who before couldn't get into architecture or drawing because they just didn't have the physical ability to do the precision drawings can now do production CAD, um, computer-aided design. The technology See, equalizes the opportunity for them in, as they compete with people who don't have disabilities. As you can see, there are a lot of choices for accessing a computer hands-free, but how do you know what's right for you? First, you need to learn about your options. 
there is tons of information on the internet. What's best is to test drive as many products as you can get your hands on. Start by contacting your state's Alliance for Technology Access Office. They know the gear and they know about getting it paid for. A full list of the ATA offices is available at the Paralysis Resource Center. Their phone number is 1-800-539-7309 or at their website www.paralysis.org.